गुड इवनिंग एम आई ऑडिबल इफ आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल कैन आई सी ए कंफर्मेशन इन द लाइट चैट प्लीज कैन यू ऑल क्यू मी थैंक यू सौरभ so uh, good evening all of you if you are joining the session for the first time this is uh, dr shanmuga priya i am professor and head of the department of biochemistry good evening yogesh good evening uh, manisha uh, thank you kavi priya so i am professor and head of the department of biochemistry at gonan thutukudi medical college and i am your an academy educator for biochemistry and today's session is on glycosphingolipidosis i will be giving you a conceptual explanation behind every feature of this uh, group of disorders i will also give you shortcuts to remember so it will be a combined conceptual discussion as well as uh, it will also help you to remember so with that basic introduction let me give you few facts about an academy's plans so there is an unlock 20 offer that is going on so if you want plus subscription currently Uh, there is a 15 percentage plus 20 percentage additional offer so if you want a 48 month subscription all that you will have to pay is 40800 so your savings would be 19200 and to avail this offer you can use any educators code you can use my code which is cshanmugapriya and if you want iconic subscription there is again a 20 percentage offer that's going on and if you want 48 month subscription uh, you will have to pay 78400 and you will be saving 19600 so that's about the unlock 20 offer that is currently going on it has been extended till august 31st and we have a neat pg 2023 integrated and system wise batch which has just started on august 25th and in this batch most of the sessions will be dual educator session so pre clinical and para clinical uh, educators will be um, integrating their subjects with clinical subjects so this this happens in three modules the first module is between august and october and as i told you it will be an integrated clinical uh, revision mcqs and long uh, case discussion will happen and module 2 is between october and november which will be previous year question discussion module 3 is image based question discussion which is in the month of december and the question bank 2.0 is coming soon this this question bank will have 18000 plus brand new questions most of these will be case based mcqs and a detailed explanation will be provided for every mcq so this will help you in conceptually learning every subject so this will give you an edge over others as far as neat pg preparation is uh, concerned so that's all about neat pg and uh, an academy's uh, plans and uh, before we start the session why this topic why should we discuss about glycosphingolipidosis because as you all know that can be uh, so till now i've seen so many questions on this topic the questions can be a one liner like this have you seen this question the lipid which accumulates in fabry's diseases so mcqs of this form uh, low sound uh, one second can you hear me now am i audible <laughs> is it better now is it audible now can you all confirm that please okay thank you dev so uh, mcq so far we have seen both the types of mcqs one variety is this uh, one liner based question or uh, this is another question which was asked hexosaminidase a defect causes can anyone try to answer this i know many of you know the answer right hexosaminidase a defect you must have learnt it as tay sachs but tay sachs was not provided among the choices yeah what they had given you is cerebrosidosis gm3 gangliosidosis gm2 and gm1 gangliosidosis what should be your answer your answer has to be gm2 gangliosidosis on the other hand a question like this can also be asked this is an ini cet paper which is a uh, which is a case based mcq so the stem is very long right so the question is let me read out the question 
For the first few months, an eight-month-old child's growth and development were normal. Then symptoms such as deafness, blindness, atrophied muscle, inability to swallow, and convulsions began to appear. So, if I ask you to club all these manifestations, what would you call these manifestations together as? Can we call all these as neurological manifestations? Yeah, deafness, blindness, atrophied muscle, inability to swallow, convulsion. So all these are neurological manifestations. And apart from this, they had also given you that during the fundus inspection, a cherry red macula was also seen. So the second clue that is given to you in this MCQ is presence of cherry red spot. Suspecting sphingolipidosis, the physician tested for globocytes and gangliocyte levels and found that both were increased. So the third clue that is provided here is elevation of or accumulation of both globocyte and gangliocyte. So though the question has got a very long stem, every statement here has got a clue. The first statement tells you that predominantly there are neurological manifestations with no organ involvement. Do you observe that there is no organ involvement here, no systemic manifestations, only neurological manifestations. And fundus examination reveals cherry red macula and accumulation of globocytes and gangliocytes. And this is very easy to remember or this is very easy to answer purely by exclusion if you know three facts about glycosphingolipidosis. So I'm going to tell you those three facts which you need to remember. Okay. So the first fact about glycosphingolipidosis is no MR in GF. What does it mean? No MR in GF which means there is no mental retardation in Gauchers and Fabrice. Do you understand this? No mental retardation in Gauchers and Fabrice. How will you remember this? All the men here, will you all agree with me if I say women are sharp? Yeah, will you all agree with me if I say women are sharp? They, they say you cannot hide anything from girlfriends, right? You cannot hide anything from girlfriends. So no mental retardation in GF. So what does GF stand for? Gauchers and Fabrice. Isn't it easy to remember? Yes, so that's the first fact that you have to remember. The second fact is how many of you have uh, seen KGF movie? How many of you saw this KGF movie? Kolar Goldfields. Yeah, so KGF. No cherry red spot in KGF. What does KGF stand for? Crab's disease, Gauchers and Fabrice. Yeah, no cherry red spot in Crab's disease, Gauchers and Fabrice. The third statement, yeah, the third statement is, so many times you have got caught, Saurav, okay. So the third statement is, uh, no hepatosplenomegaly, usually all lipid storage disorders present with hepatosplenomegaly, but no hepatosplenomegaly in GM2 gangliosidosis. And for those of you who are asking me what is GM2 gangliosidosis, there are two conditions together called as GM2 gangliosidosis. One is Tay-Sachs, the other one is Sandhoff. Please memorize. What are the two conditions together called as GM2 gangliosidosis? One is Tay-Sachs, the other one is Sandhoff. Tay-Sachs is caused by the defect of hexose aminidase A gene. Please be clear about how you learn it. What is the mutation that causes Tay-Sachs? It is hexose aminidase A gene mutation. Whereas Sandoff is caused by a mutation of hexose aminidase B gene. Okay. And what is the lipid which accumulates in Tay-Sachs? In Tay-Sachs, the lipid which accumulates is GM2 gangliocide. Whereas Sandoff, hexose aminidase B defect, B stands for both. Yeah, B stands for both. So in this condition, there is an accumulation of both GM2 gangliocyte and globocyte. Now do you understand why you call it as GM2 gangliosidosis? Yeah, why do you call Tay-Sachs and Sandoff as GM2 gangliosidosis? In both Tay-Sachs and Sandoff, there is accumulation of GM2 gangliocyte. Tay-Sachs, there is an accumulation of only GM2 gangliocyte in Sandoff which is caused by hexosaminidase B gene defect. It is both, both the accumulation of GM2 gangliocyte and globocyte. Okay, so have you memorized these three facts? I'm repeating this for your sake. As I always say this, there is no shortcut to memory, but to just repeat it multiple times. 
okay so what is the first statement i told you no mr no mental retardation in girlfriends yeah girlfriend stands for what here gorgeous and fabrice and then no cherry red spot in kgf what does kgf stand for crabs disease gorgeous and fabrice okay and no hepatosplenomegaly usually lipid storage disorders present with hepatosplenomegaly but no hepatosplenomegaly in gm2 gangliosidosis which will include two conditions one is tay sachs the other one is sandoff and no hepatosplenomegaly not only in gm2 gangliosidosis but also in crabs disease yeah please memorize it in both gm2 gangliosidosis and in crabs disease there is no hepatosplenomegaly okay so with this background can we try answering this question because this question clearly says that there is cherry red macula what are the conditions that you can exclude all of you please answer when there is cherry red spot what did i tell you it is not found in kgf what does kgf stand for crabs disease gorgeous and fabris so what are the conditions that you are going to exclude choice 3 and 4 can be excluded because there is cherry red macula okay and then between sandoff and tay sachs what is the right answer can you all give me the right answer please between sandoff and tay sachs what do you think is the right answer here they say there is an accumulation of both globocide and gangliosidin if there is an accumulation of both globocide and gangliosidin it is caused by the mutation of hexosaminidase b gene hexosaminidase b gene defect causes which condition sandoff disease okay so before we arrive at this conclusion i want you to know three more facts related to glycosphingolipidosis so what are those three facts the first fact is what is the lipid which accumulates in gorgeous i know you must have all come across an mcq related to gorgeous right gorgeous is frequently asked in gorgeous the lipid which accumulates is cerebrosides please memorize yeah what is the lipid which accumulates in gorgeous it is cerebrosides and you find accumulation of globocides in fabris disease how many of you have come across fabris disease accumulation of globocide is seen in fabris disease so let me tell you one simple clue here okay let me add a page so uh, i want you to understand one fact here about fabris it's not a fact i want you to give i want me to give you a shortcut to remember about fabris disease so about fabris disease don't you want your fabric to look colorful all of you don't you all want your fabric to look colorful so fabris disease is a colorful disease it presents with reddish purple spots yeah reddish purple spots so many a times they go uh, they go and meet a dermatologist for consultation thinking that there is some skin disorder that they are suffering from because of the presence of angiokeratomas what do you call it as angiokeratomas so just remember fabris disease fabric you all want your fabrics to be colorful it's a colorful disorder it is characterized by reddish purple spots which are because of angiokeratomas and they also present with renal disease at the end stage it presents as chronic kidney disease but at young age they present with proteinuria they initially present with proteinuria they also present with the uh, um, coronary artery disease many a times they present with myocardial infarction okay so what are the facts that you need to know about fabris disease fabric colorful fabric so reddish purple spots they present with angiokeratomas many a times they go to a dermatologist for an opinion but they also present with proteinuria and coronary artery disease many a times death will be because of myocardial infarction and the other fact that you should remember about fabris disease is it is x linked recessive disorder okay it is an x linked recessive disorder okay so that's about fabris disease and what is the lipid which accumulates in fabris disease it is globocide okay it is globocide so how i remember it is globally fabric has to be colorful globally everybody wants fabric to be colorful that is how i remember it so in fabris disease the lipid which accumulates is globocide okay so what was i telling you i was telling you this what is accumulating in gorgeous disease gorgeous disease is characterized by accumulation of cerebrosides 
accumulation of globocytes and fabrice disease and when will you see accumulation of ganglioside logically ganglioside accumulate in both gm1 gangliosidosis and gm2 gangliosidosis ganglioside accumulate in both gm1 and gm2 gangliosidosis now how can you distinguish gm1 gangliosidosis from gm2 gangliosidosis in gm1 gangliosidosis apart from neurological manifestations there will also be systemic manifestations suppose the same history yeah the history is given us the child presents with deafness blindness atrophied muscle inability to swallow with hepatosplenomegaly or cardiomegaly so if you find systemic manifestations as well then you can suspect gm1 gangliosidosis in this case it's purely neurological manifestation which means it's mostly gm2 gangliosidosis clear okay so instead of just memorizing it is accumulation of cerebrocyte and gotchers accumulation of globocyte and fabrice which many a times you might forget and they might also twist the question and ask you okay i'm going to tell you the details of glycolipids which will help you in answering any mcq related to glycolipids or any mcq related to glycosphingolipidosis so i want you to follow this session closely in which case you don't have to blindly memorize anything okay so let's start with what are lipids a simple introduction to lipids most of these lipids are esters please memorize it most of these lipids are esters containing fatty acids and alcohol yes it's not simple most of the lipids are esters containing fatty acid and alcohol now what are glycolipids as the name indicates glycolipids are also esters containing carbohydrate group in addition so what are glycolipids glycolipids are also esters containing carbohydrate group in addition to fatty acid and alcohol is that clear all of you if it's clear can i see a thumbs up from uh, anyone or all of you i mean who are attending the session so what are glycolipids are esters containing carbohydrate group in addition to fatty acid and alcohol and the alcohol that is present in glycolipids is mostly sphingosin the alcohol that is present in glycolipids is mostly sphingosin that is why you call these glycolipids as glycosphingolipids and that is why you call these disorders as glycosphingolipidosis okay now what is fatty acid and sphingosin called as fatty acid and sphingosin is called as ceramide any time you are asked you should be able to answer this so if you attend my series yeah any of my biochemistry series i will tell you why behind this but for now we don't have time just memorize it as sphingosin plus fatty acid is always called as ceramide so all glycolipids are derivatives of ceramide is that clear all glycolipids are derivatives of ceramide this ceramide gets attached to a carbohydrate for you to call it as glycolipids and depending upon which carbohydrate is attached to ceramide glycolipids are of three types yeah they are cerebrocytes globocytes and gangliocytes So tell me what are the three types of glycolipids cerebrocytes globocytes and gangliocytes i will tell you what these are if a ceramide gets attached to just a monosaccharide if a ceramide is just attached to a monosaccharide that is the simplest one which is cerebrocyte so all of you tell me what is a cerebrocyte if ceramide is attached to a monosaccharide that is called a cerebrocyte example is to ceramide you attach either glucose or just galactose so glucosyl ceramide or galactosyl ceramide will be called the cerebrocyte so tell me what are the examples of cerebrocytes ceramide is attached to glucose is glucosyl ceramide ceramide attached to galactose is galactosyl ceramide so these are examples of cerebrocytes instead of a monosaccharide if this ceramide gets attached to an oligosaccharide that is called as globocyte do you understand this instead of a monosaccharide if ceramide gets attached to an oligosaccharide that is called as globocyte example for globocyte is yeah example for globocyte is to ceramide you attach both glucose and galactose 
yeah to ceramide you attach both glucose and galactose that is called as lactosyl ceramide which is an example for globoside okay if ceramide gets attached to an oligosaccharide with n acetyl neuraminic acid the last type is if ceramide is attached to an oligosaccharide with n acetyl neuraminic acid that is called as ganglioside so what is an example for ganglioside to ceramide you attach glucose galactose and then n acetyl neuraminic acid that is a ganglioside and this is the simplest ganglioside which is gm3 ganglioside so all of you try to repeat it along with me what is the structure of because there is no point in you just memorizing it as gm2 gangliosidosis is caused by the defect of hexosaminidase a gene and hexosaminidase b gene not understanding what it means yeah because uh, as you become a clinician when you try to interpret all these conditions a basic understanding of these structures will help you in the long run okay because if you just memorize you will definitely forget it but once you understand these concepts never will you forget it okay so what is the basic structure of gm3 gangliosyl ceramide you attach glucose galactose and n acetyl neuraminic acid as the complexity increases the number decreases so how will you convert gm3 gangliosyl to gm2 gangliosyl if this galactose gets attached to n acetyl galactosamin yeah if this galactose gets attached to n acetyl galactosamin that is gm2 gangliosyl okay now you make it more complex if this n acetyl galactosamin gets attached to galactose if it gets attached to one more galactose that is gm1 gangliosyl okay that is gm1 gangliosyl so i'm going to write it down for your benefit please repeat it along with me in the live chat i want the live chat to be active please uh so i'm going to add a page here okay so uh let's start writing uh, the basic structure of cerebrosides so what did i tell you about glycolipids i said all glycolipids are derivatives of ceramide if ceramide gets attached to a monosaccharide that is called the cerebrosyde yeah what do you call it as cerebrosyde example for cerebrosyde is ceramide is attached to just a glucose or just a galactose that is cerebrosyde instead of a monosaccharide if ceramide gets attached to an oligosaccharide that is called as globoside and what is an example for globoside to ceramide you attach not only glucose but also galactose so what will you call it as you will call it as lactosyl ceramide if ceramide gets attached to an oligosaccharide with n acetyl neuraminic acid very good saurav can i see answers from everybody please if ceramide gets attached to an oligosaccharide with n acetyl neuraminic acid that is called as gangliosyl example is to ceramide you attach not only glucose and galactose but also n acetyl neuraminic acid and that is the simplest gangliosyl which is gm3 gangliosyl yeah this is the simplest gangliosyl which is gm3 gangliosyl very good abhishek now as the complexity increases the number decreases so to this galactose if you attach n acetyl glucosamin if you attach n acetyl galactosamin that becomes gm2 gangliosyl yeah to this galactose if you attach n acetyl galactosamin that is gm2 gangliosyl if you attach one more galactose that is called as gm1 gangliosyl so all of you tell me what is the basic structure of gm1 gangliosyl let's start from the basic structure of gm1 gangliosyl so you start with ceramide that is attached to glucose galactose and n acetyl neuraminic acid the galactose is attached to n acetyl galactosamin and that is attached to galactose so this is the entire gm1 gangliosyde structure i hope it's clear now yeah is it clear now so if i give you gm1 gangliosyde yeah if i give you this gm1 gangliosyde this entire structure and if i ask you to metabolize it what will you remove first if i ask you to metabolize it what will you remove first you will remove the last galactose which you add 
right and this galactose is in beta form so if you want to remove this galactose what is the enzyme that you will want the enzyme that you will want is beta galactosidase so what is the first enzyme that begins the metabolism of gm1 gangliosine it is beta galactosidase now tell me what will you call this condition when beta galactosidase is defective when beta galactosidase is defective gm1 gangliosine accumulates so this condition is called as gm1 gangliosidosis so all of you repeat it with me beta galactosidase defect causes which condition it causes gm1 gangliosidosis okay now i want you to hypothesize yeah i want you to just imagine that in this person beta galactosidase is intact so this galactose is removed and it has converted gm1 ganglioside to gm2 ganglioside once you have gm2 ganglioside what will you remove if you have gm2 ganglioside you will remove this n acetyl galactosamine and to metabolize this n acetyl galactosamine won't you need galactosaminidase all of you tell me yes or no won't you need galactosaminidase and can we call galactosaminidase otherwise as hexosaminidase galactose is a hexose so galactose aminidase is otherwise called as hexose aminidase so what is the next enzyme that you want the next enzyme that you want is hexose aminidase if hexose aminidase is intact you can successfully convert gm2 ganglioside to gm3 ganglioside so tell me what is expected when hexose aminidase is defective when hexose aminidase is defective gm2 ganglioside accumulates so that condition is called as gm2 gangliosidosis is that clear to all of you when hexose aminidase enzyme is defective it causes accumulation of gm2 gangliosidase so you call this condition as gm2 gangliosidosis now do you understand why i said tay sachs disease and sandoff yeah tay sachs disease and sandoff together are called as gm2 gangliosidosis because tay sachs is caused by the mutation of hexose aminidase a gene and sandoff is caused by the defect of hexose aminidase b gene together what will you call that condition as you will call that condition as gm2 gangliosidosis so please remember tay sachs and sandoff collectively will be called as gm2 gangliosidosis both caused by a mutation of hexose aminidase gene okay now imagine that in this person hexose aminidase is intact so gm2 ganglioside is converted to gm3 ganglioside now to metabolize this gm3 ganglioside what should you remove to metabolize this gm3 ganglioside you should remove this n acetyl uraminic acid to remove this n acetyl uraminic acid the enzyme that you want is neuraminidase so the next enzyme is neuraminidase if that is intact gm3 ganglioside can be converted to globoside if neuraminidase is intact gm3 ganglioside can be converted to globoside so if neuraminidase is inactive gm3 ganglioside accumulates so this condition is called as gm3 gangliosidosis it is also called as sialidosis yeah it is also called as sialidosis because n acetyl uraminic acid is a sialic acid so neuraminidase defect causes gm3 gangliosidosis or sialidosis now let's assume that this neuraminidase is intact it has removed this n acetyl uraminic acid it has converted gm3 gangliosidase to globoside i am asking you to metabolize this globoside what will you remove can you type it in the chat box to metabolize this globoside what will you remove you will remove the last galactose right you will remove this last galactose making vitamin deficiency simple thank you shri hari i am happy that you liked it yeah to remove this galactose this galactose is in alpha form so the first galactose in gm1 gangliosidase is in beta form that is why the enzyme that is beta galactosidase in globoside in globoside galactose is in alpha form so the enzyme is alpha galactosidase 
okay so if alpha galactosidase is intact globocyte can be converted to cerebrocyte isn't that logical if alpha galactosidase is intact globocyte can be converted to cerebrocyte now tell me what will happen when alpha galactosidase is inactive when that is inactive it causes globocytes to accumulate and alpha galactosidase defect is called as fabry's disease do you understand this alpha galactosidase defect is called as fabry's disease so what is the lipid which accumulates in fabry's disease i said globally you want the fabric to be colorful so the lipid which accumulates in fabry's disease is globocyte and what is it characterized by colorful lesions reddish purple spots angiokeratomas they also present with proteinuria and myocardial infarction okay so fabry's disease is caused by the defect of alpha galactosidase and it is x linked recessively inherited now just assume or imagine that alpha galactosidase is intact so it has converted globocyte to cerebrocyte to metabolize the cerebrocyte what should you remove the only sugar that is left back now is glucose and this glucose is in beta form so what is the last enzyme that you want the last enzyme that you want is beta glucosidase if beta glucosidase is intact can you see that here the last enzyme that you want is beta glucosidase if that is intact cerebrocytes can be converted to ceramide so what will happen when beta glucosidase is inactive when that is inactive you call that condition as gaucher's disease have you all learnt it yeah when beta glucosidase is inactive you call that condition as gaucher's disease so tell me what is the lipid which accumulates in gaucher's have a look at this the lipid which accumulates in gaucher's is cerebrocyte then i tell you that yeah so what is the lipid which accumulates in gaucher's it is cerebrocyte the lipid which accumulates in fabry's is globocyte and gangliosides accumulate in gm3 gm2 and gm1 gangliosidosis okay so i am going to write down all that i've told you so far this repetition is for your sake yeah please repeat it along with me can you do that yeah once so i'm going to repeat it please repeat it along with me so i'm going to start with what i'm going to start with the structure of gm1 gangliosyde so what is the structure of gm1 gangliosyde to ceramide you have attached glucose galactose n acetyl neuraminic acid okay and to this galactose you have attached n acetyl galactosamine and this n acetyl galactosamine is attached to galactose and this is the structure of gm1 gangliosyde now how will you metabolize this gm1 gangliosyde i want the chat box to be active please saurav abhinaya div uh, shri hari all of you please be active so what will you remove first let me use um, red color for this so the first thing that you would remove is galactose and this galactose is in which form beta form so what is the first enzyme you want the first enzyme you want is beta galactosidase if beta galactosidase is inactive it causes accumulation of gm1 gangliosyde so this condition is called as gm1 gangliosidosis so any time you ask you should be able to answer this beta galactosidase defect causes gm1 gangliosidosis now if this is intact this galactose will be removed and it gets converted to gm2 gangliosyde to metabolize this gm2 gangliosyde you are going to remove n acetyl galactosamine to remove n acetyl galactosamine you will need galactosaminidase galactosaminidase is otherwise called as what hexosaminidase okay galactosaminidase is otherwise called as hexosaminidase so if hexosaminidase is intact gm2 gangliosyde can become gm3 gangliosyde so tell me what is expected when hexosaminidase is inactive when that is inactive gm2 gangliosyde accumulates that is why hexosaminidase defect causes gm2 gangliosidosis hexosaminidase a gene defect please understand it is gene hexosaminidase a gene defect is called as tay sachs 
B gene defect is called as Sandoff. So Tay-Sachs and Sandoff together will be called as GM2 gangliosidosis. Okay. Now hexosaminidase is also intact. So you are left with GM3 gangliocyte. To metabolize this GM3 gangliocyte, I want you to remove N-acetyl neuraminic acid. So the enzyme that you want is neuraminidase. If neuraminidase is intact, you can convert GM2, you can convert GM3 gangliocyte to globocyte. So if neuraminidase is inactive, what will you call that condition as? If neuraminidase is inactive, you call that condition as GM3 gangliosidosis, otherwise called the sialidosis. Yeah, otherwise called the sialidosis. So what you have now is this. Okay, so let me add one more page. So what you have now is this, which has got ceramide that is attached to glucose, galactose, yeah, that is attached to glucose and galactose. And what will you call this as? You will, one second. So what you have now is ceramide, glucose and galactose. Okay, and what will you call this as? You will call this as globocide. Now metabolize this globocyte by removing what? By removing the last galactose. And this galactose is in which form? This galactose is in alpha form. So the last enzyme, so this enzyme is alpha galactosidase. If alpha galactosidase is intact, it can convert globocyte to cerebrocyte. Yeah, it can convert globocyte to cerebrocyte. If alpha galactosidase is inactive, what will you call that condition as? You will call that condition as Fabry's disease. Okay, which is X-linked recessively inherited. So let's assume that this alpha galactosidase is intact. It has removed the galactose and it has converted globocyte to cerebrocyte. So this cerebrocyte has got ceramide plus glucose. To metabolize this glucose, you have to remove this glucose and this glucose is in beta form. So the next enzyme that you want is beta glucosidase. If that is intact, it can remove this glucose and it can convert cerebrocyte to ceramide. If beta glucosidase is inactive, cerebrocyte accumulates. So beta glucosidase defect is called as gorgeous and the lipid which accumulates in gorgeous is nothing but cerebrocytes. Yeah, it is called as cerebrocyte. So what are we left with now? We have removed everything and we are left only with ceramide. Do you understand this? We are left only with ceramide. Now to metabolize this ceramide, what will you need? You will need ceramides. To metabolize the ceramide, you need ceramidase which can convert ceramide into sphingosin and fatty acid. If ceramidase is defective, that is called as Faber's disease. Then ceramidase is defective, that is called as Faber's disease which is a granulomatous condition. So this condition presents with painful subcutaneous nodules. Okay, it presents with painful subcutaneous nodules and cardiac failure. Okay, so that's about Faber's disease which is caused by a defect of ceramidase. Okay, so to summarize all this, I'm going to show you a tabular column and we are going to fill up this tabular column. I am going to fill up this tabular column with your help. Okay, so can we start this? Yeah, so the first question to you all is beta galactosidase defect causes which condition? You don't have to recollect any other concepts. Just fill up this tabular column. Beta galactosidase defect causes which condition? GM1 gangliosidosis. Okay. So after beta galactosidase is removed, GM1 becomes GM2 gangliosyte. And to metabolize this GM1 gangliosyte, what will you remove? You will remove hexosamin. So the next enzyme is hexosaminidase. Yeah, what is the next enzyme? The next, uh, why are you all answering differently? I am asking you beta galactosidase. Please don't get confused here. Beta glucosidase defect is called as gorgeous. Yeah, let's start with the first one. Beta galactosidase defect. Very good, Feba. So beta galactosidase defect causes GM1 gangliosidosis. 
and then to remove n acetyl galactosamine you need hexosaminidase can you answer this now please hexosaminidase defect causes which condition gm2 gangliosidosis so tell me what are the two conditions which are included in gm2 gangliosidosis it is both tay sachs and sandoff it is both tay sachs and sandoff okay and then you are going to remove n acetyl neuraminic acid so the next enzyme is neuraminidase and if neuraminidase is inactive you call that condition as gm3 gangliosidosis very good i'm happy that all of you are active good paracetamol feba chyan abinaya good good saurav excellent it is called as gm3 gangliosidosis otherwise called as sialidosis okay and then you have galactose to remove this galactose what is the enzyme you want it is alpha galactosidase if alpha galactosidase is inactive what will you call that condition as it is fabry's disease alpha galactosidase defect causes fabry's disease and what did i tell you it is characterized by yeah globocide accumulation um reddish purple spots okay so that's about alpha galactosidase defect and then beta glucosidase defect this is your favorite right all of your favorite beta glucosidase defect causes what gaucher's disease so what is the lipid which accumulates in gaucher's disease it is cerebrosides and finally what is that you have you have ceramide so it is ceramidase if ceramidase is inactive what will you call it as it is called as farber's disease which is a granulomatous condition good saura it is farber's disease which is a granulomatous condition okay so this is the table of column that i filled just now so don't get confused here beta galactosidase defect causes gm1 gangliosidosis alpha galactosidase defect causes fabry's disease okay beta glucosidase defect causes gaucher's so please don't get confused here yeah beta glucosidase defect causes gaucher's so uh before i end this discussion yeah we are no no back close to ending the discussion because there are a few other facts which i want you to know okay for a better understanding so before we uh, discuss those concepts i want you to know that galactose is not only present in gm1 gangliosidase yeah galactose is not only present in gm1 gangliosidase it is also present in keratin sulfate how many of you have attended my session on mucopolysaccharides how many of you have attended my session on mucopolysaccharides whenever i discuss about mucopolysaccharide i would say the one mucopolysaccharide which does not have uronic acid instead galactose instead of uronic acid galactose is present in keratin sulfate so galactose is not only present in gm1 gangliosidase it is also present in keratin sulfate and in myelin yeah repeat it with me galactose is present in gm1 gangliosidase keratin sulfate and myelin in all these three compounds your galactose is in beta form so to metabolize all these three compounds you want the same beta galactosidase but this beta galactosidase is of two isoforms to metabolize gm1 gangliosidase and keratin sulfate to metabolize gm1 gangliosidase and keratin sulfate you use one isoform to metabolize myelin you need another isoform so if this isoform which metabolizes myelin is defective yeah if this beta galactosidase isoform which metabolizes myelin is defective you call that condition as krabs disease what will you call that condition as krabs disease so all of you please remember krabs disease is also caused by the defect of beta galactosidase and this is concerned with metabolizing myelin then myelin metabolism gets affected it is going to be purely neurological manifestations so the child of krabs yeah any child suffering from krabs disease will present with all neurological manifestations principally they will present with deafness blindness because cranial nerves get affected they present with deafness blindness so how i remember this is have you all seen a crab walking yeah have you all seen a crab crawling or walking you know it can walk uh, uh, front back sides 
on all sides right so it walks as if it's deaf and blind yeah it walks as if it's deaf and blind so that is how i remember it okay so crab's disease is characterized by what all cranial nerve defects like deafness and blindness because it is caused by the defect of beta galactosidase which is related to myelin metabolism and when this isoform which metabolizes gm1 ganglioside and keratin sulfate is defective it can present as one of the two disorders depending upon which manifestation predominates if gm1 gangliosid accumulation features predominate you call it as gm1 gangliosidosis yeah if gm1 gangliosid accumulation features predominate you will call it as gm1 gangliosidosis in which case you will find neurological manifestations you will find systemic manifestations like hepatosplenomegaly cardiomegaly that can be cherry red spots that is called as gm1 gangliosidosis whereas when keratin sulfate accumulation predominates yeah when keratin sulfate accumulation features predominate you will call it as marku b disease you will call it as marku b disease okay so marku b disease is one of the mucopolysaccharidosis wherein there is no mental retardation so what have you learned today no mental retardation in which condition what is the mnemonic i gave you no mental retardation in gf girlfriend where yeah? what does gf stand for gorgeous and fabrice and among mucopolysaccharidosis no mental retardation marku b disease or marku disorder because only when you when you don't have mental retardation you can score marks right yeah that is how i remember no mental retardation marku disease okay so uh, the summary is yeah why am i telling you all this because i want you to know that beta galactosidase defect does not only cause gm1 gangliosidosis it also causes crabs disease it also causes marku b disease so can you see this this is the final tabular column which you should remember i will be posting the pdf in the telegram group after the session so please download the pdf and memorize it tonight i hope you have memorized it partially already yeah but it's not enough so please revise it multiple times so that it gets stored in your long term memory okay so beta galactosidase defect causes gm1 gangliosidosis marku b disease and crabs disease okay so can we try answering few mcqs now based on the knowledge that we have gained so far okay so please answer this question the lipid which accumulates in fabrice diseases you can search for my name uh, c shanmugapriya you will find it okay yeah the lipid which accumulates in fabrice diseases what is your answer globocide how did i ask you to remember this fabric should be globally yeah fabric should be globally colorful colorful it is reddish purple spots okay and what is the enzyme that is defective here the enzyme that is defective here is alpha galactosidase fabrice disease has got an a it is alpha galactosidase defect so tell me quickly in which condition cerebrocytes accumulate your favorite cerebrocytes accumulate in gorgeous disease and gorgeous disease is caused by the defect of which condition and which enzyme beta glucosidase gangliosides accumulate in which condition gm3 gangliosidosis gm2 gangliosidosis and gm1 gangliosidosis ceramide accumulates in which condition all of you ceramide ceramidase defect is called as what fabers right it is called as fabers so ceramide accumulates in fabers disease crabs disease saura crabs disease is caused by the defect of beta galactosidase wherein myelin accumulates okay yeah that that can be a minimal confusion don't have to worry but if you revise it you will be able to answer it okay hexosaminidase a defect causes what tell me the answer i hope you all know the answer for this question hexosaminidase a or hexosaminidase b gene defect causes which condition it is gm2 gangliosidosis 
we know it is called as tay sachs disease tay sachs disease is otherwise called as gm2 gangliosidosis okay good so uh, this will be the last fact which i am telling you okay as far as glycosphingolipidosis is concerned so hexosaminidase why am i saying hexosaminidase a gene defect b gene defect what does it actually mean okay so listen to this carefully hexosaminidase uh, it's an enzyme it's a dimer yeah it's an enzyme which is a dimer and this can be made up of various permutations and combinations of alpha and beta subunits your hexosaminidase enzyme yeah your hexosaminidase enzyme can be made up of various permutations and combinations of alpha and beta subunits an alpha subunit is coded by hexosaminidase a gene beta subunit is coded by hexosaminidase b gene so that's about the gene do you understand this now about the enzyme you have hexosaminidase a enzyme and hexosaminidase b enzyme hexosaminidase a enzyme is made up of alpha beta subunits whereas hexosaminidase b enzyme is made up of beta beta subunits do you understand this hexosaminidase a enzyme is made up of alpha beta subunits hexosaminidase b enzyme is made up of beta beta subunits now what did i tell you about tay sachs i repeatedly said hexosaminidase a gene defect causes tay sachs and did not say enzyme yeah hexosaminidase a gene mutation causes tay sachs whereas hexosaminidase b gene mutation causes sandoff So if a gene is mutated alpha subunit is defective if alpha subunit is defective hexosaminidase a enzyme will be defective so in tay sachs there is a defect of hexosaminidase a enzyme do you all understand this in a in tay sachs there is a defect of hexosaminidase a enzyme now in sandoff when hexosaminidase b gene is defective beta subunit goes wrong when beta subunit goes wrong both hexosaminidase a enzyme and b enzyme will be defective do you understand this so in sandoff it is a defect of both hexosaminidase a enzyme and b enzyme are you clear about this so far yeah so do you want me to write it yeah i will write it here so what was i telling you let me tell you the differences between tay sachs and sandoff yeah i am telling you this repeatedly because you might think you have understood it but there are very minimal differences between the two conditions in which case if you don't understand those minimal differences you might commit mistakes okay so listen to this carefully you should start with which gene is defective so tell me the answer which gene is defective in tay sachs it is hexosaminidase a gene in sandoff it is hexosaminidase b gene defect so which subunit is defective all of you the subunit that is defective in tay sachs is alpha subunit in sandoff it is beta subunit which enzyme is defective yeah alpha subunit takes part only in the formation of hexosaminidase a enzyme so in tay sachs only hexosaminidase a enzyme is defective whereas beta subunit is involved in the formation of both hexosaminidase a enzyme and b enzyme do you understand this difference now so the enzyme that is defective in tay sachs is hexosaminidase a enzyme in sandoff it is both hexosaminidase a enzyme and b enzyme okay and hexosaminidase a enzyme is involved in the metabolism of gm2 gangliosidase okay hexosaminidase a enzyme is involved in the metabolism of gm2 gangliosidase so in both the conditions what is the lipid which accumulates in both the conditions there is accumulation of gm2 gangliosidase hexosaminidase b enzyme is involved in the metabolism of globoside it is involved in the metabolism of globoside so in sandoff there is accumulation of both gm2 gangliosidase and globoside is that clear is that clear now so tay sachs is caused by the defect of hexosaminidase a gene sandoff is caused by a defect of hexosaminidase b gene enzyme wise tay sachs is caused by the defect of only hexosaminidase a enzyme sandoff is caused by the defect of both hexosaminidase a and b enzyme 
in tay sacs the lipid which accumulates is gm2 ganglioside in sand of the lipid which accumulates is both gm2 ganglioside and globoside okay so if you know this you will never forget it okay okay so now can you answer this question hexosaminidase a defect causes which condition a defect causes gm2 gangliosidosis beta galactosidase defect causes all except i will be happy if you can all answer this beta galactosidase defect i said beta galactosidase defect causes three conditions one is gm1 gangliosidosis the other one is a mucopolysaccharidosis which is marqb disease okay and the last one which is involved in myelin metabolism when that enzyme is defective what did i call that condition is that is called as krabs disease yeah that is called as krabs disease so beta galactosidase defect causes gm1 gangliosidosis marqb disease and krabs i'm very happy that most of you have answered it right excellent feba saurav chayan and the good so what is the right answer the right answer here is gm3 gangliosidosis a 46 year old male was referred for dermatological evaluation of purpura he was already getting treated for proteinuria and a recent episode of myocardial infarction so purpura proteinuria myocardial infarction what will you suspect you will suspect fabry's disease the lipid which accumulates in fabry's diseases it is globoside very good excellent so the last question which i started with yeah this is the same question which i started with i'm ending with the same question i hope you have clarity now okay so the first few statements tell you that there are neurological manifestations yeah there are neurological manifestations without systemic manifestations first prof for plus subscriber i am starting on september 3rd piyush september 3rd okay so neurological manifestations without systemic manifestations and there is cherry red macula so just this cherry red macula what will you exclude no cherry red macula in kgf so krabs disease gotchers and fabries so i have excluded choice 3 and choice 4 and the last statement says there is accumulation of both globoside and gangliosside if there is an accumulation of both globoside and gangliosside very good saurav chayan and dip so if there is accumulation of both globoside and gangliosside what will be our answer it is sand off okay so that's all about glycosphingolipidosis i hope now you will be able to answer any question related to uh, glycosphingolipidosis because you have learnt it conceptually and i've also given you shortcuts yeah so i want you to learn every topic be it a biochemistry topic or any clinical subject this way yeah don't fall for shortcuts you can use shortcut as just a um, help yeah it's, it should be just used as a help it should not be the only resort that you uh, depend on okay so try to switch over from factual learning to conceptual learning so all the best Thank you see you sometime later